if I climbed over and tripped in the sand, he'd probably kill me. Nothing personal. A snap of the jaws can sever an arm. They explode out of the water amazingly fast. A slap of the tail can shatter a leg. If they hit you just right, they can break your knee. Just the head can weigh 100 pounds. It's like a giant cinder block swinging. It can crush bones. Its brain weighs not even half an ounce. It's a hard question to know what's really going through their mind. But whatever's there is confident, brooding, relentless. They are survivalists. They always find a way to get through. And that smirk, always there, they all have it. It looks like he's smiling. But the grin is bogus. That killer smile is a crocodilian's con, nature's sick joke. Nature's fascinating. And even the eye, creepy. The vertical pupils, the bulging eye sockets. You see his eyes bubbling? Yeah. It's nice and worked up. Eyes that saw the Earth 250 million years ago when the world looked like this, when ancient ancestors of alligators and cousins of crocodiles lived alongside, often terrified, and frequently ate the earliest dinosaurs. That's loud, huh? Yeah. But dinosaurs, every last one, died during the Great Extinction. Almost everything on Earth died. Almost. They survived the things that dinosaurs couldn't survive. Something allowed them to persist when most other things did not. Supreme survivors, yet exquisitely fragile. Enduring, but endangered. Man-eater, mild-mannered. Lethargic, lively. Deadly, docile. Eerily silent, blaringly shrill. Primeval, or maybe just evil. And it really is a primordial fear. There's nothing more primal than the fear of something rising from dark water and grabbing you and pulling you under. But for some strange reason... People are drawn to the things that they fear. Things like scary movies, roller coasters, and... The St. Augustine Alligator Farm. Drawing 200,000 people per year... We don't really have alligators in Virginia. Are you afraid of them? Yeah. <laughs> Are they scary? No. The alligators don't scare you? No. You've not seen anything scary today? Mm, no. The only place in the world that has all 23 different species of crocodilians. Also Florida's oldest tourist attraction. The park opened in 1893, then known as the Museum of Marine Curiosities. Since then, seen by millions, they wander through this tropical maze, a reptile repository populated by about 900 crocodilians. That term includes gators, crocs, gharials, and caimans. Some critically endangered, some nearly extinct. We have always been and always will be about conservation and education only. Here, visitors, inches away from jaws of death and dismemberment, stand protected by partitions of plexiglass and barriers of bamboo. And it's just being that close, you just feel like, oh my gosh, this thing clearly could eat me. Lockjaw, good boy, open up. You gotta open that mouth. One time I had a dream, it was trying to bite me. Did they get you? No, I just ran away. I saw one gator looking at us like he was getting ready to eat us. Their mouth is huge. He was just huge. That thing is huge. I find him fascinating. People come to Florida because it's paradise, but then they want to be scared to death by seeing these monsters. That Florida tradition actually started in the 19th century, even before the Museum of Marine Curiosities. But tourists back then had a very different definition of good, clean fun. The thing you would do then is come and you get on a steamboat on the St. John's River and then you'd see the gators sunning on the bank and everybody go grab their rifles and shotguns and blast away at them. Nowadays, we shoot them with cell phones, not shotguns. We take photos, not hides. Somewhere along the way, 
we discovered how crucial, how central they are to Florida's ecosystem. This we learned slowly, and barely before very nearly exterminating every wild gator in the state. But we did learn. This is the business end of a crocodilian. Teeth that make a butcher knife seem like a butter knife and a mouth that boasts a most incredible claim. It's the most powerful bite on the planet. Bite force of an American alligator varies from gator to gator, but figure for the big guys, about 3,000 pounds. Their first bite, the raccoon is, is done. Bite force of a saltwater crocodile, close to 4,000 pounds. And that means... Take that down to the points of the teeth, you're looking at a quarter of a million pounds per square inch of pressure within the jaws. Wow. Yeah. Can you compare that to something? It's like dropping a truck on your hand. <laughs> that beats a bite from a great white shark, a killer whale, a lion, a tiger, and even, some scientists say, rivaling the bite of a T-Rex, long considered the most vicious predator ever. To put you as close as possible to the most powerful bite on Earth, we've developed a sophisticated device called the Croc Cam. A tiny camera smartly attached to a six-foot pole. Like the gators themselves, the Croc Cam's amphibious, functioning equally well on land and underwater. Croc Cam's one fatal flaw, a crocodilian's bite could smash it to smithereens. But if Croc Cam survives, You'll see crocodilians as you've never seen them before. Alrighty. Jim Darlington, a 20-year veteran at Alligator Farm, operates the croc cam. Open up, Hunter. Open up. As he perilously places it and himself next to the deadly jaws, croc cam's first image appears. Open up. There you go. Notice Croc Cam is now completely inside the giant gator's mouth. Here, anything can happen. Any miscalculation by Jim, a slip of the hand. Should Croc Cam even touch the tongue or tap the teeth or wrap the roof of the mouth, it's like springing a trap. When something touches the inside of their mouth, they slam shut. Incredibly fast blink of an eye. Their reaction time, I believe, has been measured down to like 1 20th of a second. Big boy. Alligators, although they appear apathetic, are actually curious creatures, even nosy. And that's another danger here. Curious crocodilians investigate. And typically they investigate new objects by ingesting them. Croc cam could become someone's happy meal. Come on, Palmer. Come on, big boy. Palmer's not having it, but then Skipper appears. Skipper! a patriarch of the enclosure, a favorite here at Alligator Farm, and one of the lagoon's largest. Come here, big boy. Come here, crazy alligator. That was close. Very close. With each approach, Jim dangerously treads well within the animal's dreaded swing zone. He's calm but careful. That means watch it. It's kind of grumpy, huh? You can't work here for as long as I have without having close calls. When you get bitten, it's because you did something wrong. You messed up. Some keepers wear it as a badge of honor. Usually just means you did something really dumb. Unpredictable behavior and unimaginable bite force plus a primitive and pitiless instinct that somehow survived a quarter of a billion years. It's why around here, there's a morbid if amusing adage. Alligators make snap judgments. Is that all right? Our croc cam got lucky.
in advertisements circa 1950. Baby alligators for sale, a buck fifty each. The ad claims your gator can sing, laugh, and quite possibly live two centuries. But then, when those pet gators got big, they got flushed. They slipped into the sewers, somehow survived, and grew to gigantic proportions. Just an urban legend? Yeah, apparently. Although, in 1935, the New York Times reported the finding of an eight-foot gator down in the sewer, frail and feeble, but alive. And New York City's superintendent of sewers said unequivocally in a 1959 book, yes, he eyewitnessed a sizable gator colony flourishing below the streets of Manhattan. But the official position? No. No gators in the sewers. We hear stories all the time about alligators doing things that they really can't do. There are a tremendous number of them. Like living for hundreds of years. Not quite. In the wild, it's about 35 or 40 years. We've had them live here for 80 years. Or holding their breath underwater for weeks at a time. Not exactly. I get this question all the time, how long can an alligator hold his breath? Well, when he's warm and active, a half hour. When he's really cold and he's not using a lot of energy, he may hold his breath for two days. Some people think crocodiles live only in exotic locales like the Amazon River. But the American crocodile is in South Florida. You can tell us a croc by the shape of the snout. You'll notice one thing with Skipper here. He's got a very broad, rounded, sort of U-shaped snout. Whereas if this were a crocodile, it's more V-shaped. You can also tell by the teeth. Alligators have an overbite, so their upper jaw covers up all the teeth in their lower jaw. But crocodiles' jaws, you'll see upper and lower teeth when their mouth is shut. Then there's the notion they run at mind-blowing speeds. This concept of them getting up and running at 50 miles an hour. Not even close. Big mama. Now there's no question they're quick. Certainly they're sudden. But gators can't run fast or far. Most humans can easily outrun them. Besides, a running gator is probably going the other way. You cannot get this close to wild alligators before they take off. They're usually very frightened of people. Frightened in the wild, but not in captivity. Captive animals tend to be much more dangerous than wild animals. They get used to us, especially when somebody's handing out food. To gators, the server and supper seem one and the same. They don't discern any difference in that dead rat in the hand that's holding it. And if they get a hold of something more than what you're offering, no offense. That's likely why wild gators sometimes go after humans. Almost every attack in Florida, we can go back and start doing interviews and find out that people had been feeding that alligator. Something changes in the alligator's mind. No longer is he afraid of you. It's now illegal to feed alligators in Florida for that reason. But it's not because they're bloodthirsty. They don't have a taste for human flesh. Besides, we're way too big. They don't like to work that hard. Instead, they prefer small fish, insects, frogs, birds, possums. It's not always about big ducks or deer or rabbits and raccoons. It's little turtles, small snails, things that are already floating around dead. They're not picky. Even a big gator. If you came across an alligator like Skipper in the wild and you could look inside his tummy, you'd find mostly insects. Sometimes they even go vegan. They do eat vegetables, and they will seek out plant foods. But whatever they eat, they swallow everything whole. He may go up and down to crush it and make it fit, but they don't chew their food. Their teeth are really designed for grabbing and holding on, not for chewing. A 16, 17-foot crocodile can swallow uh, 10 or 12, 30 pounds of animal all at once. And if it's too big, they still don't chew. He just rips out one big bite. What's more, gators are not gluttonous. They eat much less than we do. They're a cold-blooded animal, and they don't have to eat every day. A big gator may eat 50 pounds of food a year, a fraction of what the average American eats. Give a gator one good-sized raccoon, and he's good to go for a month. You are very tolerant. Open up, nice and wide. With crocodilians, as with almost everything that's interesting, there's legend, there's myth, there's exaggeration, there's assumption, but someplace beyond that land of magical thinking, there's truth. Elusive, nuanced, often as murky as a swamp,
but supported by studies, reinforced by research, and frequently, what you never expected. If alligators behaved like Nile crocs, Florida would not be the vacation wonderland that it is. That's because Nile crocs kill hundreds of people a year. That would be a horrible way to die. It would be. Some of the signs that are left from an attack are pretty nauseating. But perhaps even more terrifying than Nile crocs, some might even say the scariest animal in the park, Maximo. He's the alligator farm's resident superstar, the 15-foot saltwater croc topping half a ton. He's only 40 years old, which means that he's about middle aged. He definitely has a lot more time to grow. Maximo hatched in Australia. He was on exhibit and for sale in 2003 when the alligator farm found him. As soon as we saw him, we knew that was a crocodile. He's so beautiful because he's such light colors and got such a good scale pattern. They also saw how Maximo always hung out with one female in particular. They were inseparable. And so we brought them over here together. Come here, Sydney. Come here, Sydney. Come here, big girl. That's a good girl. So they shipped Maximo and Sydney to St. Augustine separately. And then we put them together, and it was immediate recognition. They bred immediately right in front of us. Do they ever fight? No. Nothing to fight about. <laughs> Is it just familiarity, friendship, fondness? Or somewhere in that cold-blooded brain did a croc's neurons make a love connection? I don't know. That's very much a human term, I think. But as close as it gets in a crocodile, I guess so. <laughs> A dicey situation now developing deep in the restricted zones of the alligator farm swamp. A question of custody concerning this mound of dirt garnished with leaves and debris. Her goal is to guard that nest. Our goal, get our eggs to the incubation chambers for hatching. But the mother. She does not want us going near her. If you got close and tried to do something, she will bite you, for sure. And bite as hard as she can. She's gonna latch on and she would likely shake like mad. And so it begins. So I'll basically make myself a major source of aggravation. While Jim deals with that, a greater danger lurks in the swamp a few yards away. It's sort of like a bunch of sleeping dogs. They are so close. And if we make too much noise, if she makes too much ruckus, then they'll hear us. And God help us. They look around and they see us standing here. And most of the time when they see us down here, it's in regards to food. And then they go into feeding mode. So then they all come at us. We'll be leaving by then. Here she comes again. Very determined to, to guard her nest.
Time for a fast exit. Luckily, the others are leaving us alone now. All right, what do we have? Cody and Lauren now take the eggs to the incubator. It's basically set them up and leave them alone. The eggs hatch in 60 days. That's an infertile egg. That one looks like it's good. We'll be back to see the babies. So that is the scariest animal in the park. I think so. The scariest animal in the park is apparently in this enclosure. Somewhere, he's shy as well as scary. There, a blue-faced version of Big Bird that brings to mind a particular prehistoric monster. The first thing I thought, Velociraptor. Sure. I consider it the most dangerous animal we have here, and so I'd much rather catch a lot of crocodiles than mess with this big bird. The southern cassowary is flightless but hardly defenseless. Check out the center toe fortified with a razor-sharp claw. It's lethal. That bird could kill you. Absolutely. They've been known to eviscerate people who have gotten too close to them. Otherwise, they eat fruit and insects, don't bother anything else, and basically want to be left alone. But ironically, this flightless bird has a flighty demeanor. They just kind of freak out. They're like a big turkey that says, oh my gosh, and I'm scared, and just slashes out with this toe. We treat it just like we would a lion or a tiger. Nobody goes in the enclosure with that bird. We think of them as very small-brained, but the truth is everything we see about them in captivity and in the wild shows that they're smart. So never mind if their brains weigh less than a walnut. Crocodilians do things daily that amaze their trainers. A great example is in our lagoon, we have 44 animals out there. Over a dozen of them know their individual names. How do you train an alligator? Just like you train any other animal, or a person for that matter, you find what they want, and you give it to them when they've done something you want. What they want is alligator chow, these little brownish biscuits, dry protein pellets fortified with vitamins and minerals, specifically designed for crocodilians, better for them than chicken, and all part of the balanced breakfast. One more. Wow. You can teach an alligator to run when you say the word run? To go through a door when we ask him to. Get out. Good girl. To touch a target stick with the end of their snout. Stop. Open their mouths on cue so it gives us a chance to look at their teeth, their jawline. It gives us a chance to do a physical exam of the animal. You ready? Wider. I like that. There you go. And one more. There you go. Impressive as this is, that tiny brain can do more than rote responses. Crocodilians, alert, observant, perceptive, actually possess mindfulness. Granted, it doesn't look that way. You see them laying there, they look like they're asleep, they're not moving, but they're actually keenly aware of everything around them. They know time of day better than we do. They know feeding time, whether people gather around or not. And despite those walnut-sized brains, somewhere in there is a cerebral cortex missing from all other reptiles, but crucial for memory, thought, consciousness, a crocs version of what's found in higher animals like dogs, dolphins, cats, chimps, and man. No one would really expect them to be more than mindless killing machines. They're very complex animals. They outthink us sometimes. They know my face. I've seen them respond to me when I come in on my day off in street clothes. But don't be fooled. Any buddy buddy is all on my part, not his. There's no affection on his part. No, no. 
he's not friendly, he's just extra, extra tolerant. Say if I'm standing here talking and Skipper got a hold of my hand, our past interactions have nothing to do with it. He would shake and spin and try to remove it and eat it. Nothing personal. For every year human beings have walked the earth, crocodilians and their ancestors have lived a thousand. They survived when dinosaurs succumbed. Oh, wow. They endured the great extinction, but they were no match for 20th century men who considered them monsters. It's a little bit of a distress call, but that's how they get their mother's attention. In Florida, we did to crocodilians in decades what nature, evolution, or God couldn't or wouldn't do over a quarter of a billion years. We very nearly wiped them out. We morphed millions of American alligators into shoes and belts and purses. For a time, in fact, St. Augustine Alligator Farm was one of the few places in Florida to view an alligator. The ones in the wild were almost gone. That's all changed. The hand that slaughtered American alligators began to safeguard them. Now, by simply leaving them alone for a while, they're no longer endangered. What is this like for you? It's like Christmas. <laughs> her power to impact our environment for good or bad is enormous and without precedent. What existed on Earth for eons, man can extinguish for eternity in what seems a nanosecond. So with that in mind, one wonders, who's really the scariest animal in the park? Is it the man-eating crocodile? The hissing gators snarling in the swamp? Or the bizarre bird with a razor-like toe that shreds a foe in seconds? Look closely. Look hard. See the faint, fluttering images. Now, on reflection, who do you see as the scariest animal in the park? <laughs>